I think the first time I heard the word cheatgrass, other than in my Senate confirmation hearing, was from Governor Otter. Interior Secretary Sally Jewell has come a long way from there. She's grown into a savvy, effective leader by leaning on the skills and expertise of the federal employees on the ground and by listening to and collaborating with local and state leaders in the West. I think the future of collaboration is essential. I don't think that we can effectively manage these landscapes without taking into account different points of view. Sally Jewell is effectively the nation's top wildlife manager and landlord. More than 500 million acres of land and the countless species contained within depend on her watchful eye. She oversees 600 dams, 68% of the nation's oil and gas reserves, and millions of acres of federal mining lands with sometimes competing interest. 16 million acres of that flora, fauna, dams, mining and drilling is right here in Idaho. There have to be voices that speak up for the benefit of the intangible va values of the landscape, and that's part of what we do. Sometimes that's harder to do um, when you're right there sitting across the table from somebody every day. You may know it's the right thing to do, but uh, we're also happy to play bad cop when we need to. The former oil field geologist won over the conservation community as CEO of REI. She won over many of her 70,000 employees by going out into the field, watching and listening. And in May, she again came to Idaho. Earlier today, I had an opportunity to go and visit the site of the soda fire, just shy of 280,000 acres that burned in what was really prime uh, sagebrush habitat that is important not only to 350 different species of animals, but also to 41 different uh, lot, lot tea holders who graze their cattle on these landscapes in both Idaho and Oregon. What I saw was incredible collaboration among a, a group of very knowledgeable scientists. Secretary Jewell walked through wildflowers and charred stumps of old growth sagebrush where $14 million of rehabilitation was underway. Bureau of Land Management and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologists and range managers showed her various sites where they planted and seeded grasses, sagebrush, and forbs. They applied herbicides and other agents in hope of restoring the scorched earth to its earlier state. We are working hard to protect these areas that Idaho is known for. You know, I'm a Northwesterner myself. I've spent uh, many, many days uh, tromping through the wilderness in all of these states in the Northwest. I know what's at stake. The hope is to stabilize the area to prevent erosion for the short term, but also to lay the long-term groundwork for a $65 million five-year restoration program. Uh, we're one year into this. The fire happened less than a year ago. So one year does not uh, give you a great picture of how these landscapes are going to rebound. In some cases, you know, these are many decades old uh, ecosystems that are coming back from uh, real devastation. Jewell acknowledged the concerns of scientific critics of the planting of non-native seeds and the use of herbicides. And she said she welcomed such a variety of questions she says monitoring will answer. I am very proud of the capability of the scientists on the ground that are working this. And they are very willing to share what they're doing and to take insights uh, from others that are knowledgeable about these landscapes, people like ranchers that work it every day, and also scientists uh, that have been working on it for years. The land is not young, and its rehabilitation will not be swift. Secretary Jewell has a mere seven and a half months left in her service to the terrain, a blink in the history of the West. But what she hopes will continue is the diverse conversation. I don't think that we can effectively manage these landscapes without taking into account different points of view. And I think that that's collaboration at every level. It's um, people working the lands every single day. It's people that use the lands, maybe they're visitors, maybe they're tourists. Um, it's elected officials, but it's also not elected officials. It's getting out into sometimes those kitchens or those diners with people that may not feel that they can speak up because they're being bullied in their own communities by people that have very strong views. I mean, I, I think the job of those uh, people in the field offices and the regional offices and the state offices is to find out what's really going on.
on the landscapes and to not just listen to the loudest voices, uh, but to also make sure that there's time for all voices to be heard. But it goes both ways. I mean, it also Absolutely. goes from the agencies in DC. Yes. I mean, and that's really the issues that at the moment are being raised here is that at the local level, they reached agreement. They sit and they've made agreements. And there are people in DC who say, well, those are nice, but, yeah, but we don't honor them. Uh, I don't think that's accurate, Rocky. Okay, okay. I think that that's, uh, bear in mind that when you are on the side of a soccer field or somebody or in a diner with somebody, uh, your kids are in the same school, you may know exactly why a decision is being made, but it's a lot easier to say, well, that's not what I wanted to do, but the guys in DC wanted to do it. So, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I would say that um, I've not been witness to a situation where We've had a thoughtful discussion about where something needed to go, and then someone in Washington, D.C. makes an arbitrary decision to change it. That's a dialogue that people like to talk about, uh, but I don't think that that's accurate. That perception, accurate or not, is prevalent, and it runs contrary to her goals and the legacy she'd like to leave. The biggest symbol of how tenuous this collaboration is came last February when the Bundys made a claim to a piece of land in Oregon. They thought it was their land, and they didn't think you were going to do a darn thing about it. Of course, that changed. <laughs> well, this little thing called the law, yeah. which they were breaking, and I, I think that the lack of support for the occupiers at the Malheur Refuge was indicative of a community that is proud to work in harmony with nature and uh, has good collaborative relationships with their federal land managers in the area. And you bit, you went to Moliere afterwards and saw what they did. And it's rough. You know, we're going to lose a lot of the staff there because um, That's sad. They're, uh, they're afraid. That's too bad. Yeah, That's it is wrong. too bad. All right, thanks. Thank you. As Secretary Jewell stands up and sprints to the finish line, the question remains, will collaboration or conflict be the lasting legacy for public lands. I'm Rocky Barker for the Idaho Statesman and Idaho Public Television.